Hi, I'm Dr. Renee from The Natural Vets and this is Elsa the Snow Queen. And we're here today to demonstrate a gentle walking technique. A technique that will allow you and your dog to both enjoy a walk together without any stress, anxiety or discomfort. Most dogs enjoy freedom on a walk. They want to be able to sniff everything and explore and walk at their own pace. And if they're marching along, it's often because they're stressed or they haven't yet learnt a proper walking technique. And so Elsa's not quite five months old yet. And so she's still learning how to walk on a lead. And sometimes trainers or people might give you an idea that your dogs need to march next to, next to you, learn how to walk pretty much in your shadow and stay close to you the whole time. With this technique, you'll find that you don't have to walk that way. So Elsa here is going to demonstrate the comfortable walking equipment that we recommend. We don't recommend walking your dog on a collar or any sort of restricted device. And there's lots of really poorly designed harnesses out there as well. So what we look for in a harness, we recommend the Hucky Hana harnesses. This is an H style harness. It's really comfortable webbing, very good quality uh, workmanship and materials. And it's a H style. So you've got the strap that runs down the back line of your dog. And then we can just roll Elsa over. You can see there's also the strap that runs down the belly as well. And so you want these straps to be long enough that the circle that runs around their chest, when they're standing up and walking, isn't rubbing up under the armpit because that gets really uncomfortable for your dog. You also want the point at the front to be sitting low down on the sternum rather than pushing up around the neck. There's lots of really sensitive structures in the neck and any pressure on those, like the thyroid gland, the skeleton, the blood vessels, the nerves, the muscles, the tendons, any pressure on those can potentially cause damage to your dog. Uh, the D-ring for the harness is at the back. So when your dog is walking, any pressure on the harness gets spread over the whole harness rather than putting pressure around the throat and the neck of your dog. And then the long leash is connected to the back of the harness. And so that's what we recommend. As I said, there's lots of badly designed harnesses on the market. A lot of them have got too much fabric, so that can irritate the skin of the dog. It can make them really hot. A lot of them rub up under the elbow or sit too high up on the neck. Or There's a lot out there that pull across the shoulders. So you'll see a lot of those where they've got the straps coming around here. And so that means when the dog's walking, they can't freely extend their forelimbs. They're always are a little bit restricted with their gait and that can cause a lot of musculoskeletal issues so we don't recommend that style either. So comfortable walking equipment, nice long leash and you're ready to go. We'll demonstrate the walking technique for you now. When you're walking your dog in a harness a lot of people can be concerned about being pulled along by their dogs and that can be a valid concern if you've got a very large or a very strong dog but that's simply about technique, learning your dog to walk nicely in the harness is just about practice and learning their manners and getting that walking style correct. So we'll just see if we can demonstrate a bit of the walking technique now. To stop your shoulder from getting pulled out when you're using a longer leash, you want to make sure you've got two hands on the leash at all times. With your hands turned upward rather than down, that gives you body less inclination to want to pull your dog. You're nice and relaxed with the leash and you're basically letting the leash out as your dog wants to go off and explore on a walk and then if you need to come in closer to them to redirect them away from anything or to get them to follow you then rather than pulling the dog towards you you simply take up the slack in the leash and walk towards them. One of the main body language cues to remember with dogs is if there is anything that they perceive to be a threat coming towards them it helps to curve them away at a distance from that. So rather than pulling them away, you would actually walk in a curve away from that. So you can see Elsa's just spotted our cat, who's just behind the video camera there, and she's quite interested in that. So if you wanted to allow her to go and say hello to the cat, you'd just take the tension off the leash and give her a bit of room, and then she could then choose to walk towards the cat if she wanted to. You've still got two hands on the leash, so if she, leash, so if she was to lunge towards a cat, then you might want to put some pressure on the leash. And rather than then pulling you, you just hold your ground. 
So if your dog's ever pulling you towards something and you don't want them going in that direction, rather than pulling your dog away, simply stand your ground very firmly with some tension on the line and they will eventually work out that they're not going in that direction. They'll check back in with you and then you can walk off in another direction. It's nice to allow your dog time to sniff, explore everything around them. And this may be all you do on a walk with a puppy the first few times. It's not about getting them on a leash and yanking them and pulling them along, and dragging them at your pace. It's just about getting them out and allowing them to explore. Sniffing is one of the best things you can let your dog do on a walk. It's one of the ways that they work out lots of things about their environment. And it's also a really calming thing for them to be doing as well. And so here I'll just demonstrate what to do if your dog is pulling or walking off in a direction you don't want to go. Instead of following them, just hold your ground. Eventually they will check back in with you and then you can redirect them off in another way. If they're not wanting to follow you, it can help to come in a little bit closer by taking up the slack on the leash and then just using your body language to redirect them off in the direction you want to go. Come on. Good girl. So once you practice this technique and you get used to your leash handling skills, it becomes a really enjoyable, relaxed way of walking with your dog. I wouldn't recommend you walk multiple dogs using this technique the first time because it does take a little bit of getting used to working the leash and letting it in and out. But once you've got really good leash skills, you can walk multiple dogs using this technique. So just to summarize, make sure the walk is an enjoyable experience for both of you. It's not just about fitness, it's not just about getting outside, it's not just about mental stimulation. It's also about meeting your dog's needs and allowing them to express their behaviours and helping them to become curious and confident with the world around them. Don't forget you need comfortable walking equipment. You need a nice long leash. There should never be any tension on the line unless you're holding your ground to encourage your dog to come with you. And that's it. We cover this in week three of our Path to Wellness webinar series. So if you want to know any more about the webinars that we do run, you can email us on hello at thenaturalvets.com.au. And if you want to know any more about this type of walking technique, Turid Rugas, who's a Norwegian dog trainer, has got excellent resources on this. And Jenny Goldsby from the Complete Pet Company in Brisbane runs workshops every month where she demonstrates this technique as well.